Welcome back, Hacks Maniacs. Did you know that every year in the US alone, over a thousand people die from cold exposure, essentially freezing to death? Now, you know what? Instead of throwing this trash away, I'm gonna show you how using the trash in this bag, you can stay warm and stay alive in a catastrophe. Good job, monkey. Super windy out today, so we're gonna do this on our back porch. And I've got some help from my beautiful assistant, Cameron, today. Now, to be honest, cold weather disasters aren't something at the top of my list for likely threats living in the South. It's that type of thinking though that can make a freak winter storm like the one that hit Texas and I think it was 2021, so devastating. Unlike us, if you happen to live in a part of the country or the world that regularly deals with cold weather, you're probably prepared for it. But when 70 degrees Fahrenheit is sweater weather, you don't really give staying warm much thought. Let's assume you've exhausted all other methods of staying warm and your last resort is a fire. Even if you've got firewood and a lighter, you'll probably run out of lighter fluid before you get that log to light using this method. Now I am by no means some master bushcrafter, so I'm gonna focus on starting fires and I'm gonna show you an amazing way to build a small portable fire that you can take with you wherever you need to go and keep you warm. Are you ready to bring out your inner raccoon and start playing with garbage? <laughs> I'm sure there's a collection of absolutely random yet highly valuable and useful stuff in this bag of garbage. Let's pretend that we don't have a lighter or a ferro rod. But please people, please tell me you have a lighter, okay? Do a little pre-planning. First off the bat is we have a piece of steel wool here. Slightly used steel wool, still highly valuable. What else is down here? Oh, what is that? A nine volt battery. <laughs> Another, I mean, how fortuitous. Let's also take one of our food pans here. All right, baby, you take a piece of that, kind of tear that in half. <laughs> All right, take part of that, yeah, spread it apart because we want air to get to it as much as we can. Let's put that in there. And then you take that and then touch it to that. Ooh, look at it go, look at it go. That is wild. Looks like ants crawling. We've got a spark, but we need a flame. What can we do about that? I noticed that we just so happen to have some used cotton balls. And we got us some Vaseline, some petroleum jelly. All right. Ooh, and a dog hair. Cool. <laughs> Girl, did you light the steel wool? Did you? <laughs> you lit the steel wool. We're not ready. Take the Vaseline. And we're going to rub that in there really good. Get that Vaseline all over that cotton ball. You can kind of pull it apart a little bit. Now you can take as many of these as you want. I'm gonna take another piece of that steel wool and wrap it around this cotton ball. All right, now, like that. There we go. Nice. Now, we got a little fire going. One cotton ball dipped in Vaseline like that will probably burn for at least five minutes. This is a tiny little fire, but I already took the liberty of collecting some small dried leaves. Make sure you get dried ones that have fallen and not ones that still have moisture in them. Then I also got some dried grass. You want to start out small and really dry before you start putting anything bigger on top. Even that small little fire is good and warm. Oh, yeah, that pan is hot. <laughs> I don't know why I thought. It's, it's aluminum, so I thought it would not be, but it is. Woo, that's hot. All right. Okay, Cameron, let's see what else we got here. I see some nasty, disgusting dryer lint. Although, I must say, if you've got a large belly button, dig in it because it would work just as well. Cameron, do you have any of this in your belly button? <laughs> None? Go check your dryer because you got it. Don't throw this stuff out. This stuff's like, uh, you know, gold when it comes to starting a fire. So again, we're gonna kind of get it really fuzzy, pull it apart, just like we did with the steel wool. 
Do you want to try to use that? We're going to get bush crafty here. Do you want to try to use the ferro rod? Ready? There it goes. Look at there. Look at the sparks. Ooh, that stinks. <coughs> Again, you take that and you start throwing some dry stuff on there. And you can look right over here and see that our fire that we started earlier is still going. Woo! Hot again, hot again, people. Don't touch the pan, okay? It's hot. Thank goodness I'm here for adult supervision. So we had this egg carton in here as well. And one thing that you can do if you want to pre-plan is you can take this lint and you can stuff it down into the voids in the egg carton. Then you can melt wax on top of that and tear each one of these sections off. Then you'd seal it with wax. You can just melt a candle on top of that. And then you've got pre-made fire starters ready to go that are easy to store. Kim, good Lord, woman, are you shedding? There's like your hair is all in this. Why are you assuming it's Oh, I can only assume, because you don't, your hair doesn't come out. That's, look at that, is that a mommy hair? <laughs> it's a, well, that was a long time ago, Kim. <laughs> Before we get too far away from the cotton balls, let's use this cranberry sauce can. Let's take these cotton balls. We're gonna put those into that can. And then I'm gonna get something that is um, not trash, okay? But hopefully you have it somewhere in your house because you should have this. While I was uh, gathering this, I went ahead and grabbed some more cotton balls from their place of origin in the bathroom. This is, I, well, tell me Kim, what is this? It's a purple alcohol. Iso purple alcohol. Iso purple alcohol. Okay. Isopropyl alcohol. Yep, you good for a minute? Okay. Then we're gonna take the, pour it right onto the cotton balls. Yep, okay. Just let them soak it up. Okay, pour a little bit more on the cotton balls real slow. Okay, or not. <laughs> it's okay. Nothing's pouring out, so see, they've soaked it up. Yeah. It's hard to see that flame, but there is a flame there. There, now it's coming up. This will burn much longer than five minutes. Maybe we should time that out. Start. Here we go. There's a rumor going around, Cameron, that marshmallows, potato chips, and duct tape also make good fire starters. I don't know if that's true or not, Let's, let's see real quick. Shall we see? Okay. Let's start with the potato chips. Hex Maniacs, my mom has been working on a series of children's books for over 20 years, and we finally got the first one published. These stories are about the different creatures that live in Ladybug Forest and the challenges they face. There's no hidden agendas in these books. They just teach good old fashioned patience, understanding, kindness, and manners. This one is called Henry Hopper's First Day of School, and it was illustrated by my dad before he passed, so it really means a lot to us. If you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, or even pets that love stories, when you finish breakfast, I'll walk you to school, said Daddy Hopper. I know all about school, remarked Henry. This would make an awesome gift. If you want to order Henry Hopper's First Day of School for your favorite little one, and at the same time, show some love to my mom. People, it's my mom, show some love. I'll put a link in the description. Christmas will be here soon, so do not delay. Duct tape, B minus. Potato chips, fail. That's not much of a fire starter. Marshmallows, fail. There is another source of refuse that is in your house that's probably trash. Let me go get it real quick. If you don't have any of this, your kids probably do. Pencil sharpener. Alrighty then. Let's see how well this works. <laughs> Why'd you make that mess? Why'd you make that mess? Hold up, let's try it with the uh, ferro rod first. There we go. Look at it burn. Ooh, that stinks. Now, one thing you can do if you want to always be able to do this is have a little pencil sharpener with you. Might be kind of a cool thing to put in your bug out bag. I don't know. Just a little handheld 
pencil sharpener because you can either sharpen a pencil and use those shavings or you can take small sticks that are about the diameter of a pencil and make your tinder that way. And then you can take that little stick and you can poke the cameraman in the hand. Ow. 19 and a half minutes since we lit our fire. Now all these fire starters are all fine and good, but what if you want a bigger fire that you can take with you? Let's take this old uh, can of stain and use my tractor key to <laughs> pop it open. They'll stain in there. Ew, gross, that's nasty. It's not that gross! Bring forth the TP. What you're gonna do is take this whole roll of toilet tissue and kind of work it and get the tube loose inside there. Oh, Cameron Burns. <laughs> Steel wool over here, she's fascinated by it. Now, don't throw away that tube because it makes an excellent monocle or monocular, I should say. You can do the same thing with the lint or really any of this stuff. Just like with the egg carton, fill that up with lint, seal both ends with wax and you got a fire starter. We're gonna take the toilet paper and we're gonna jam it down in there. It seems easier said than done. Ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a big roll of toilet tissue. Here, let me help you. It's, if it was Halloween, this would be perfect. Here we go. Pour it slowly in there though. Slowly, love, slowly. Pour the iso purple alcohol onto the toilet paper. I'm gonna let it soak in, okay. Go again. Okay, you can pour a little bit more in there. Ooh, girlfriend, hold up, hold up. Pour some more. I believe I may have created a monster here. Okay, pour some more alcohol in there. Rest that on there. Oh, okay, hard, hard. No, don't, don't go at it. Set it on it, set it on it and grind on it. There you go. Harder. Yeah, you're doing it. Now you're getting it. Oh, there we go. Back up. We are lit. That puts out. That's some good heat right there. Oh, Lord, don't get yourself burnt. Watch your hands now. Watch your hands. All right, be careful wherever you build this. And also be careful... Yeah, you know, it's the, the fumes. You gotta be careful about breathing in the fumes, especially like with this, because this was put in a old can of stain, so there's still a little bit of stain in here. Anyway, you don't wanna be breathing in noxious fumes. Let me show you another way you can do this if you'd like to pre-plan. Now, that other one is still burning. Okay, let me see real quick. Let's, let's set this one beside it. Let's try not to catch the house on fire. So we got that one going. Let me check and see here what our time is on here. We are at 28 minutes. And if you look down in there, that's nowhere near going out yet. Can you see that flame? Is it showing up? It's this other one. Yeah, it's showing out right there. There we go, yeah. yeah. So we're at 28 and a half minutes, still going, no signs of going out. Go down to your local paint supplier, get an empty quart can, take your toilet tissue, just like before, soak her down. Take your can, put a, put the lid on it, seal it up. Take a quarter, put the quarter on the lid. Can you cut that for me? Okay. Take that quarter down. The reason you put the quarter on there is because then whenever you need to remove the lid, you've always got something. You can use that quarter to go around the rim. You could also go ahead and tape a lighter to it, to the side of it, if you wanna you know, just be super prepared, 
or on top. You can actually give those as gifts to people as emergency fires or emergency fire starters, depending on how you wanted to look at it. 32 minutes and this one has just gone out. I'm pretty certain this is gonna burn for a couple hours based on how long the small one stayed lit. But now you know how to stay warm. But you know what? You also need to know how to have water that's clean that you can drink to survive. So watch this video right here and I'll show you how to make sure you have clean water if your water is contaminated.